Welcome to another episode of the How to Fight with a Longsword series, or in other words, the Lichtenauer Tradition Longsword Fencing Basic Course. In this episode, we'll go back to Longsword and take a closer look at how it can be used. We'll also learn the last guard of the Fear Lager and the last guard of the Fear Facetten. Now, before we start with the actual subject of this episode, please do note that the incorrect examples are executed on purpose so that the issues are easier to see. All the techniques based on the historical sources are shown according to my current interpretation. As such, they are subject to change if I ever come up with or run into a better interpretation. Langort is also known as the Sprechfenster or speaking window. Danzig goes as far as saying that this is the noblest and the best guard one can stand in. In the manuscripts, the Sprechfenster is referred to both as a guard before coming into a bind and while being in a bind. In a bind, they instruct you to have the sword and arms extended and to bind with the long edge. You can end up in this position by either closing in using Langort or by cutting a strong cut and ending up with the point in line and arms extended. Simply, the idea is that with fully extended sword and arms, you force your opponent to somehow address your weapon if they wish to attack. Generally, they must come to a bind and that is what the manuscripts want to happen. But now, to the exercises. The trainee stands in long mort. Remember to have the non-dominant foot forwards. The coach stands in Fontag at a passing step distance. The trainee trusts to the coach's face in opposition. As they already have their arms extended, they simply take a passing step and wind to the upper opening. Return to the starting position and repeat. It is important that you wind so that you close the coach's direct attack line. Do not leave your arms to the center. Next the same drill, but now the coach stands in fluke. It doesn't matter in which fluke the coach stands. It is recommended that you try both. Once again, the trainee trusts the coach to the face in opposition. Return to the starting position and repeat. And finally the same drill, but this time the coach stands in shrunk hood. Again, try the drill against both shank roots. The trainee trusts in opposition and returns to the starting position. Repeat. In the next drill, we'll bring Durchflexlen into the previous drill. The starting situation is the same. The coach stands in either shrunk hood and the trainee in long mode. The coach cuts a crump out of the trainee's sword. The trainee uses Durchwechseln and trusts the coach to the face in opposition. Return to the starting position and repeat. Then using Absetzen against an Oberhau. The trainee once again stands in long mode. The coach stands in Fontag at a passing step distance. The coach cuts an Oberhau at the trainee's head. The trainee uses Absetzen to land a thrust at the coach's face. Return to the starting position and repeat. Remember that the Absetzen is a counterattack. You want to close the line and attack in a single action. Don't turn this into a parry repost. And then Absetzen against the thrust. The trainee stands in long mode and the coach in fluke on either side at a passing step distance. The coach attacks with a thrust in opposition. The trainee counterattacks with an upsetten. Return to the starting position and repeat. Then a rather difficult multi-choice drill combining the previous drills. The trainee stands in long mode. The coach can freely change between von Tag, Schrankhut and Flug. Both fences are moving freely. From von Tag, the coach can attack with an Oberhau to the trainee's head. In this case, the trainee counterattacks with an upsetten. From Fluke, the coach is allowed to attack with a thrust. Also, in this case, the trainee counterattacks with an upsetson. From Shrunkhood, the coach can cut a crump out of the trainee's sword. In this case, the trainee uses Durfexlen and then trusts the coach to the face in opposition. If the coach doesn't do anything and the trainee is at a distance from which they can trust with a passing step, they can do so. Remember the trust in opposition. Start the drill at a rather slow speed so that the trainee has time to react. Then the same drill, but no, the coach always stands in from dog. However, they have all the same options as in the previous drill. If the coach wants to trust, they can transition to fluke and immediately trust after the transition. The trainee is still allowed to trust if the coach does nothing. 
as the coach is now making all the attacks from the same guard, reading them is naturally more difficult. It is highly recommended that you start the drill at a very slow speed. As you might remember from the Shilhau episode, a low Shilhau works well against Langort. It is also the recommended way to handle it. You can use it to get the point in line and continue with a thrust. Or you can use the shield how to cut to the hands. Once again, don't do this if the coach doesn't have gloves. If you are in long mode and your opponent attacks with a shield how, you can try to use upsets and like you did against an orbehow. However, because of the way shield how is cut, it is much more difficult. As such, I recommend that you do a parry post instead. Try to keep the point forwards as much as possible to allow for a quick thrust. Next we have the last of the fair lager, the Albe. To get into Albe, stand in Langort with your dominant foot forwards. Then lower the sword down so that it points towards the ground. Remember to have a proper grip on the sword. Now that we know all of the fair lager, let's briefly discuss the principle of the Hauptstücke. In my opinion, the fair lager is a way to simplify all possible guard positions to few possible main variations. What this does is that it allows you to make quick decisions on what techniques to use even against people fencing using systems you don't know. I think of this using two variables. We have high and low guards. Basically, hands at chest level or higher and hands lower than chest level. And we have cutting and thrusting guards. Or point in line and point of line guards. Basically, is the point of the sword directly roughly at the direction of the opponent. Vom Tag is the high cutting guard. Any technique which works against Vom Tag will more or less work against any guard in which the fencer has their hands at chest level or higher and their sword is not pointing towards their opponent. Ox is the high trusting guard and anything with hands high and the point more or less directed at the opponent falls under this category. Fluke is the low trusting guard. Any other hands low and point in line guard such as Longord, falls under this. And finally, Alber is the low cutting guard. Shrankhut also falls under this category. When you can basically limit possible scenarios to four, it makes your decision making that much faster. You don't have to think about dozens of possible guards. Simply think of anything as either Fontag, Ox, Fluke or Alber. This also makes fencing against unfamiliar fencing systems much much easier. But now to drills. Let's start by making clear that Shilhau is not what the manuscripts instruct us to do. However, I've found it to work relatively consistently and I've found it easier for people to use. We'll take a look at the manuscript correct attack a bit later. In the starting position the trainee stands in Vom Tag and the coach in Alba. They are at a passing step distance. The trainee cuts a shield how without their step so that the point ends up in line. Then they trust with a passing step. It is important that the trust is directed low, basically at the navel of the coach. Why this is is explained in a second. As the coach is not wearing a jacket, make sure not to land the trust. The trainee must leave the trust short. The step is specifically done only after the cut so that it is easier to leave the trust short. If the coach was wearing a jacket, you would step with the cut. What I find the benefit of using shield how to be is that it gives at least some protection against suicidal fencers. To explain, let's take a quick look at what the manuscript correct answer against Alper is. It is simply to cut strongly directly to the head of the opponent. When fencing with sharp swords, any sane person would try to parry or dodge this, as failing to do so would most likely mean death or very serious injury. Even getting hit to the head like this with a feather when not wearing a helmet would be extremely dangerous, possibly lethal. In the manuscript correct version there is no mechanical protection against a suicidal fencer. If the opponent decides to go for a trust, you will both get hit. The only thing preventing them is self-preservation. The bad thing about this is that in modern competition fencing this might be a risk worth taking as there is no risk of death or serious injury. If you can try to land a trust with a sidestep, the likely scenarios are that 
both get hit with equal scoring hits. Or you land the trust and get hit to a lower scoring location, thus winning the exchange. Naturally, this differs from scoring system to scoring system. The point is, however, that this is possible to game when protective equipment and scoring systems are in old. As Shilhau closes the low center line, it protects against this at least somewhat. It might not be as effective as an attack, but it will also make attack against you much more likely to fail. Thus, in my opinion, this is a valid option in modern context. Also, it is worth considering that based on historical evidence and duels and combat in general, people don't always act in self-preserving manner. But I won't go more into that, as it is way out of the scope of this video. Now, back to the manuscript correct situation. As you briefly saw earlier, the proper attack against someone in Alba is to cut directly to the head. This is called Scheitelhau, and it is the last of our fair facetsen. The correct parry against this is called the Kron. Danzig describes that in Kron, point and hilt both stand over him. Ringing describes that they have the hilt high over his head. My interpretation is that the point is mostly upwards and slightly to the side. The arms are somewhat directed forwards. The dominant hand is at eye level or higher. Many interpret the crown to be done so that the sword is completely vertical. I find this to be much more difficult to parry with. Having the sword slightly angled to the side makes it cover more horizontal distance. As a negative, the cross offers slightly less protection to the hands. Now to the crown exercise. Stand in Alba. To parry so that the sword points slightly towards your non-dominant side, you want to yank your dominant shoulder back. To do this, explosively rotate your hips. Bring the sword up so that your hands are at eye level or higher and in front of your dominant shoulder when seen from the front. The point of the sword should be roughly in front of your non-dominant shoulder when seen from the front. To parry so that the sword points slightly towards your dominant side, you want to yank your non-dominant shoulder back. Then a bear drill. The trainee stands in Alba, the coach in Fontag. The fences are at a passing step distance. The coach cuts in Scheitelhau. This is simply a completely vertical, or close to, cut to the head of the trainee. The cut is done with a passing step. The trainee parries in Kron as explained previously. Remember to practice parrying both ways. You want to parry with your hands at eye level or slightly higher. Don't parry with your hands straight up. When cutting the Scheitelhau, have a proper grip on the saw throughout the cut. Don't try to bring up the pommel. This makes it very difficult to continue attacking after a failed Scheitelhau. Next, a continuation after a parried Scheitelhau. The starting situation is the same as for the previous drill. Now the trainee cuts a Scheitelhau and the coach parries. After the coach has parried, the trainee brings the non-dominant hand up and learns the short edge down. Then they trust the coach's face over the sword. When doing this, you don't want to cross your arms. When you bring your non-dominant hand up, do so on the non-dominant side of your dominant arm. Ringek instructs us to trust to the face and Danzig to trust to the chest. To be able to trust to the chest, the opponent would have to parry with the hands basically at eye level and fully extended forwards. Ringek instructs us to keep the long edge on the opponent's hilt. This would require us to break our grip, and it would make it very difficult to continue with the next described attack. I have not found a way to make this work properly. I have a slight feeling that this might be a scribal error mixing long and short edges. This is because it would make more sense to specify the short edge instead of the long. The manuscripts also have similar issues, possibly mixing left and right. However, I have absolutely nothing else than my gut feeling to back this up. It is completely possible that the intention was to break the grip to make the movement slightly faster. It is also possible that I have simply not actually figured out the correct way to do this. That being said, I have decided to teach this with the short edge down as it is mechanically a better way to do this and allows for better follow-up actions. Also, breaking our grip is not a bright idea if our opponent decides to come in and wrestle with us. That also happens to be the manuscript correct way to continue after parrying a Scheitelhau in Kron. When the coach parries the Scheitelhau, they must do so slightly above eye level. If the coach parries too high, trusting will become impossible. 
then a second continuation of the same sequence. When the trainee trusts after a failed shaitalhau, the coach parries by raising their hands higher. At this point it will be impossible to land the trust. Now the trainee brings their sword around the coach's cross guard and slices their arms. Simply bring the sword down and place the sword on the coach's forearms. Then push in to slice. You don't want to try and make an actual cut. Make sure that the coach is wearing at least a shirt and that your sword doesn't have any nicks as those might cause an injury or rip the coach's clothes. The slice version is what Danzig instructs us to do. Ringek instructs us to trust to the coach's chest instead. The hands high point down position is the same. The difference is that now you would trust instead of slice while closing the attack line from the coach. As mentioned earlier, the manuscript correct thing to do after pairing a Scheitelhau in Kron would be to go in and wrestle. We will take a very brief look at this in episode 14. However, let's make it very clear right now. I am far from a good wrestler. That should be obvious to anyone who has any wrestling experience just by watching the hip trotion right now. Before we get into the recap, go and stab that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Langort is also known as the Sprechfenster or the Speaking Window. It is not one of the fair legger. Danzig describes the Langort as the noblest and the best guard one can stand in. Scheitelhau is one of the fair facetsen and one of the Meisterhau. It breaks the Alba and all low cutting guards in general. I personally prefer to use a Low shield how with a trust against an Alber as I find it to be safer. However, Scheitelhau is the manuscript correct attack.